of the Church of Rome. And I found a very important documentation, which I will share with you in the fifth lecture. Now, I found that this historical change from Saba to Sandy began during the reign of the Emperor Hadrian, who reigned from 117 to 138 as a result of three major factors. One was anti-Judaism that led to the abandonment of the Sabbath. The second was sun worship that influenced the adoption of Sandy. And the third was the various measures employed by various popes to lead people away from Sabbath keeping to Sunday keeping. Here, for example, I have the picture of Pope Sixtus, the one who introduced Easter Sunday and the weekly Sunday. Victor, the one who excommunicated the Asian Christian for refusing to accept the Easter Sunday and most likely the weekly Sunday celebration. Pope Sylvester, the one who made the Sabbath a day of fasting to kill the joy of the Sabbath. Pope Innocent the First, the Pope that prohibited any assembly, any celebration of the Lord's Supper on Sabbath. Now, why were these measures taken? The main reason was the, uh, the repressive, anti-Jewish, anti-Sabbath policy of the Roman government. This Roman emperor, Hadrian, uh, you can see this picture here on the cover of the Biblical Archaeology Review that published my article as the cover story some time ago. This Roman emperor, Hadrian, after fighting three years to suppress what is known as the Bar Kokhba revolt from 132 to 135, he suffered many casualties. But when he finally captured Jerusalem, he said, this is it. Hitler said, let's liquidate the Jews. Hadrian said, let's liquidate Judaism as a religion. What did he do? He outlawed not only the Jewish religion in general, but seven days Sabbath keeping in particular. And I found it was in that critical moment when seven days Sabbath keeping was proscribed, forbidden, outlawed by Roman law, that many Christians of a Gentile background followed the lead of the Bishop of Rome in adopting Sunday observance instead of the Sabbath. So as you can see, the motive for changing the Sabbath to Sunday was expediency, was the desire to avoid a repressive anti-Sabbath legislation. May I ask you, is expediency a legitimate motive for changing a divine commandment? Did you ever read in your Bible, if you find it difficult to observe one of my commandments, please don't suffer for it, just change it. Just change it. Have you ever read that in your Bible? But folks, this is exactly what has happened. Time and again in the history of Christianity, there have been church leaders who have chosen compromise rather than commitment to the, to the teaching of the Word of God. Now, anti-Judaism explains the reason for the abandonment of the Sabbath, but the choice of Sunday, of the day of the sun, was influenced by sun worship that became very influ influential in ancient Rome. I found that there were two kinds of sun worship. One is the native one. Here you see Apollos with the sunburst, here with the chariot ascending to the sun. That was the Roman uh, god Apollos that was made into a sun god by the beginning of the second century. Then there was the foreign sun god Mithraism that became very popular. Mithras became very popular among the, among the, in the army, among the soldier, among the merchant, among the magistrate. And this syncretistic sun worship and this popularity of the sun god made the day of the sun the first and most important important day of the week. It's a bit difficult to explain everything in a few seconds, but some of you might be able to catch what I'm trying to say. Originally, the seven-day week, which were the, all the days of the week were named after the planet and were shown according to the picture of the planetary god that controlled a particular day of the week. Originally, the day of the sun was the second day of the week. The first day of the week was Saturn. Dies Saturni was day number one. Dies Solis was day number two. That is in the first century, but as the sun god became the most important god, what did they do? They advanced the day of the sun from day number two to day number one. And I found that when the sun god became the first and most important day of the week for the Romans, obviously then Saturday became the seventh day for both the Roman and the Christian and the Jews. But when that development occurred, this advancement of the day of the sun to the first and most important position, I found that many Gentiles coming from a Gentile background felt that um, 
by adopting the day of the sun, the day which was venerated in the Roman society, they could show separation from the Jews, identification with the Romans. So the change from Sabbath to Sunday was not just a change of names or of numbers, but was a change of meaning, authority, and experience. It was a change from God's holy day to a man-made holiday. I'd like to close tonight by sharing with you the most dramatic moment of my experience, the day of my defense. The date was Friday afternoon, June 14, 1974. So many years have gone by. When is it? Almost 29 years. It's so fresh in my mind as if it was yesterday. I remember this Aula Magna, this grand hall with all of these gold leaves, decorated living, all the Baroque furniture. There was a long examining table. Behind the table, there were five distinguished chairs scholar, all of them with a shining top like mine, and there was about 100 Adventists that came out that Friday afternoon to a listen to an Adventist boy. I, I grew up among them, so they called me the Adventist boy, defending the Sabbath truth before such a distinguished team of Vatican scholar. I was given one hour. I was sitting on the main floor behind a small desk. I was given one hour to give a summary of the methodology and conclusion of my research, and in that one hour, I explained not only what I found in the archives, but as I came to the end, I made a fervent appeal to rediscover the Sabbath in order to revitalize the quality of Christian living of millions of people throughout the world. I wish you would have been there. I guarantee to you it would have been an unforgettable experience to hear my professor, Vincenzo Monachino, the one who directed the dissertation of Mosnes, I was telling you a moment ago, and the one who directed my dissertation as well. In fact, he wrote the foreword. The he presented both dissertations. They forward to both the dissertations. And you know what he said? After spending two years with my previous students, Corrado Mosna, I thought we had established conclusively the apostolic origin of Sunday. But after spending two more years with San Bacchiochi, I have to confess to you today that I have changed my mind. I have come to realize that Sunday keeping is a post-apostolic phenomenon. Oh, that was sweet music to my ear. To hear my professor that he had changed his mind. And you know, if you know anything about the scholarly community, when a scholar develops a thesis, a view, he doesn't want to renegade it. They usually fight for it to the bitter end. And you know, at the end he said, and now after all what Sam has said and done about the Sabbath, there is one thing left for us to do. What's going to be? Is he going to excommunicate me now? No, it's the one thing left for us to do, and that is to wish to Sam a good, holy Sabbath day of rest. Mamma mia, I was ready to invite my professor to join with me in a special Sabbath celebration.